When I graduated from college with a degree in math, I had absolutely no idea what I wanted to do. I had played basketball for a couple of years. A friend of mine was a graduate assistant for the team. He finished his graduate studies at the same time, took a job as a head basketball coach at a nearby high school, and I decided to go along and be his assistant coach and teach math. We inherited a team that had lost 37 consecutive games. First game of the season, it's late in the game and the score is tied. The excitement is building. We call timeout. Uh, the coach and I huddle up to discuss strategy before we talk to the players. As the brash young assistant, I immediately began arguing for a risky strategy and I conclude my argument with, hey coach, no guts, no glory. Without missing a beat, he said, yeah coach, no brains, no job. When I look back on that incident, I, I think it actually captures exactly what I've devoted my entire professional career to, which is studying the relationship and the integration of our analytical sides and our intuitive emotional sides. One of the things that I've discovered in my over 30 years of teaching not just MBA students, but executives and working with companies, there is a false dichotomy out there, namely that there's such a thing as qualitative analysis and quantitative analysis. In my experience, there's only good analysis. And good analysis is like a coin. It's got two sides, a qualitative side and a quantitative side. I have never encountered an important qualitative issue that did not have an implication for the numbers. If it has no implication for the numbers, almost by definition, it's not important. Just do the right thing and move on. Where it does have an implication for the numbers, if you fail to turn the coin over, one thing that might happen is you get blindsided. There are unintended consequences you didn't anticipate. But more excitingly, by turning the coin over and looking at the implication for the numbers, you sometimes gain insight that you didn't have before. And that insight can lead you to make better decisions by generating new alternatives and better ways of managing risk and creating value. However, the only way it's going to do that and affect the decision making is if the quantitative side gets translated back over to the qualitative side because our emotional intuitive parts, they don't, it, that part of us doesn't do numbers. It only does stories. The good news is I've never seen a good analysis that did not tell a compelling story. The challenge is how do we take the analysis, whether it comes from big data, which increasingly we're seeing lots of opportunities in that space, how do you take that big data and translate it into something that might influence not only how we think, but how we actually intuitively feel about the decisions that we face. And I have devoted my career, and that's my passion, is how do we help people in both directions bridge the gap between analysis and intuition.